Yeah, but for a new king of less than a year to no longer be doing any engagements in front of the public, I, I just think, you know, knowing Charles uh, as I have for a long time, not, not particularly closely, but having followed his, his life, this is a tough guy, a very fit guy, used to yomping around the highlands and leading a very fit, active life. For him to basically retreat from public life in the way that he is... Yes, he may be saying he's wholly positive. I wouldn't expect anything else. But I, I, I think this must be a serious situation because he, he, he's cancelling all public engagements, apparently, while he undergoes this treatment. I mean, there's no doubt that, you know, cancer is serious for anyone. But I think in terms of sort of retreating from public view, when, you know, depending on what his treatment involves, the palace and the royal family and the king himself will want to minimise, you know, the health risk to him in terms of, it's one thing to meet with the Prime Minister and have an audience with him, as we're told, hopefully he will continue to do that and meet with the Privy Council. It's a, it's another thing to, you know, be at a Buckingham Palace reception with 300 people in the room, which I think is why, you know, erring on the side of caution for the head of state, for our monarch, he's withdrawn. But of course, you know, you, you cannot shy away from the fact that the King, as you say, just a year and a half into his reign, is having to withdraw from public life, temporarily, we hope, is a huge blow to him, a huge blow to his reign, and it's going to be a big challenge for him and the family to rally round. Yeah. Uh, Tom, the subplot here, um, and Andrew Neil was quite right, this shouldn't be the story, but it's interesting that there's obviously this massive ongoing rift with Prince Harry and his father, but we've been told from friends of Prince Harry that he's planning to fly from California to see his father, which will be the nearest thing to a rapprochement We've seen you do see this with families when they're warring is a dramatic event like this uh, can bring people together. What do you make of that? Well, I think that uh, rapprochement is fitting. On the other hand, I'm very suspicious uh, because, we, as we've discussed often here, um, Harry's agenda has been so anti-monarchist, has been so disrespectful of the king and the queen and, of course, of his brother, that uh, for him suddenly to turn up in London, not having expressed any a concern for his father when he heard originally about the prostrate problem, which is two weeks ago, uh, that's been a period of silence. So suddenly he's flying in. I think it seems two things, not the rapprochement only, but also how serious it is. I don't think it is a benign issue at all. I think you're quite right that there is a, there is a mini crisis happening. Yeah, and Andrew Neil, if I could come back to you uh, for a moment. You know, we've covered the royals for many, many decades and they've always been the biggest story in town. And like you say, the news of the king's diagnosis is leading the news around the world, not least in America, um, where it's huge. I've had loads of calls from people wanting interviews about this already. So you can see, you can see how big a story this is. But does it also point to the fragility of our royal family right now? We've lost the great matriarch in the queen. We lost the great patriarch in Prince Philip. We've now got the Princess of Wales, who's having months off uh, work because of... Uh, we don't know what, what it was that she had, but it was obviously pretty serious. Uh, we've got Charles now, the new monarch who has cancer. You know, if you look at the sort of top, the top list of royals, this is, a, this is a big moment, isn't it? I mean, this is a... a like I say, this, this points to the fragility of the whole thing. It's come at a bad time. Of course, cancer diagnosis has never come at a good time, but it, it, with the royal family, we've gone from a surplus to famine uh, very, very quickly. I mean, a lot of people will say, I don't mind uh, the king or the queen. I don't mind the very top royals, but I don't like all these hangers-on. Well, a lot of the so-called, my mother used to call them hangers-on. Well, these kind of royals seem to have stopped hanging on. They've disappeared now. Prince Andrew's no longer in, in the game. Prince Harry counted himself out along uh, with Meghan. Uh, the Princess of Wales has not been well, so William has refused himself uh, too. We are now uh, have a royal family that is pretty short-handed. And, of course, this will put huge strain on the Queen at a very difficult time for her, but also more strain on William, who was hoping to step back and look after his wife he is now under pressure and will succumb to that pressure to get back into public life and pick up some of these public engagements. So it's um, the productivity of the remaining senior members of the royal family who are able to do what royals should be doing, and there are not many of them anymore, but that will have to increase in the weeks and months ahead. And I think the other thing to look for, look, this is just a breaking story, Piers, as you know, we do not know what kind of cancer it is, though all cancer is scary and bad. 
We do not know the treatment that the king is getting or what impact the treatment will have yeah. on the king himself, which I think is very uh, Im important. So I think in the days and probably the weeks ahead, we'll get a better idea of whether the king, whether the king will be able to carry on in private with his important duties and eventually come back to public life, or whether it's so serious that even in private, his duties are now hard to, to carry out. That, to my mind, is the thing to look for in the weeks ahead. Yeah, I completely agree. Sarah, I mean, Andrew, you're so right, isn't it, that the number of top people in the royal family available to do the functional work of the royal family, which is huge. I mean, they all do hundreds of royal engagements a year. These can be big ones, small ones, but they're serving the people. That's the deal, the contract with the British public. There aren't many of them at the moment able to actually work. No, and, and, and those that are working already have packed schedules. Princess Anne, for example, <clears throat> has an incredibly busy diary. Yeah. And, and the king is going to be relying on his sister now, also on uh, Sophie, uh, the Duchess of Edinburgh, on Edward, the, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, and Prince William. But as Andrew was saying, Prince William was hoping to take some time out to be looking after his wife and children. Next week is half term. The children will be home from school. Kate not really able uh, to be carrying on as normal. But we had the announcement today, and I think the timing of that was significant and choreographed, that he's back to public duties on Wednesday. He's going to be hosting an mm. investiture at Windsor Castle. He's got an event on Wednesday. He needs to be seen, because as the late Queen used to say, you know, the royal family need to be seen well, to be believed. Well, worth remembering... William will be very worried about his wife. And worried Ca about his father. And Camilla will be absolutely, you know, heartbroken about what's going on with Charles, the great love of her life. Never mind the public duty stuff. Yeah. She's going to carry on with her duties. There presumably some of them will have to pick up some of the kings at some stage if it carries on. But she'll also have... In her own world, this is a devastating moment. Yes. And it's, sometimes it's easy to forget and the human want to beings be supporting him through his treatment yeah. as well, because we don't know what impact it's going to have on him. You talked about reading line, between the lines of the statements. Uh, now we look back on some of the words that Camilla has said over the past couple of weeks. Mm. Initially, when she was asked, she said he was doing fine. Last week, she said he's doing his best. Yes. Uh, when she was asked yeah. how he was, and that takes on a greater significance now we know what has been going on. Okay. Uh, 